Welcome back. Before the Christmas break, I caught up with Albert Kuhn, who's president of the Adventist Church in one of the most fascinating nations on earth. You might notice something just a little bit different about me in the interview. Thanks so much for coming, Albert. Very nice, James. It's glad to be, I'm glad to be here with you. Now, most of our viewers, uh, I'm going to be honest here, have probably not been to Mongolia. Sure. And I'm one of them. Um, where exactly is it located? And if you could just give us a little bit of an overview of what it's like to live in Mongolia today. You know, I think the viewers don't need to be worried about because I was like most of them. Uh -huh. I was not aware of Mongolia at all when I heard about the possibility of going to Mongolia. Mm -hmm. uh, Mongolia is located north of China mm -hmm. and south of Russia. And, and I guess, uh, you know, when we think about Mongolia, isn't that where Genghis Khan yes. came from? So, the, and you think of the horses and the steppes and, and, and yaks and so forth. What's it like today? You know, uh, James, I would say that today, in many sense, it didn't change much. Okay. You know, it's still Mongolia has the, you know, the, the environment that you can read on the Genghis Khan books and all the history books. And right. as you go out of Ulaanbaatar, uh -huh. that is the capital city, okay. you know, you can see, you know, the horses, you can see the herders, you can see the nomadic lifestyle in Mongolia that is still there. Now, you are actually from Brazil. Yes, that's right. So I can't imagine two more sort of disparate places. You're right. Brazil, and you think of sort of uh, carnivals and, and beaches and all that Tropical kind of stuff. Country, Tropical country, <laughs> uh, soccer games. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. And, and, and you end up in, in Mongolia. Yeah. How did you end up going from, from Brazil to, to Mongolia? Yeah. Uh, look, I never really expect to be a missionary. Mm -hmm. I never expect to go overseas to work. Right. But as a, you know, a, a pastor, as a spiritual worker, let's say, mm -hmm. I made a commitment mm. that goes where the Lord leads me. Right. So one day someone called me uh, speaking English, and as the viewers probably are noticing, English is not my first language, right. you know, and, and I could not speak the English, I could not speak the language. Finally, we end, uh, we end up talking personally, and I said, look, this is who I am, I'm willing to serve, I'm willing to help others, and if the Lord leads me there, I will, mm. and I'll do my best. So, I learned English, believe it or not, in Mongolia. Well, <laughs> and I believe that they have done a lousy job there, but anyway. <laughs> no, you, you, you've done a great job. I mean, certainly a lot better than my Portuguese. Okay. So, so we think of, uh, uh, of Mongolia was actually part of the Soviet Union, is that That's right? That's right, yeah. So religion wouldn't have been uh, very uh, well fostered, I guess we could say, during the Soviet era. Right. Um, what religion were people traditionally in Mongolia, and how did that religion fare during the Soviet times? Yeah. You know, Mongolians are traditionally Buddhists, mm -hmm. but if you read a little bit of Genghis Khan history, mm -hmm. you see that he was also someone who promoted the freedom. Okay. Yeah, the history tell that one of his wives, uh, she was a Christian. Really? And he was, yeah, and he was uh, le uh, very much uh, in favor of promoting, mm -hmm. you know, religious freedom as long as people can be, you know, happy together, supporting mm -hmm. each other. There is this beautiful part of his history hmm. saying that he was someone who really like to promote religious freedom. So probably not a lot of political freedom, but at least some religious freedom. That's the right. Soviets roll in, in what, in the, in the 19, 1920, 1920, okay. Yeah. So what happened then? Uh, probably, you know, as you understand, and the viewers also know, uh, the communist system is not much in favor of religion, sure, promoting absolutely. religion. Mm -hmm. So they destroy most of the monasteries. Hmm. They kill a, a lot of the monks, hmm. the lamas. And basically, the religion was suppressed, and uh, people were, were not allowed. But in 1991, 1992, mm -hmm. you know, things changed, as we all know. The mm -hmm. communism fell, and uh, religion was brought back again. So here Mongolia. we are, 20 years later, roughly. How is Christianity faring in Mongolia? Uh, Christianity, at the beginning, mm. when you know the Russians withdrew and mm -hmm. went back, uh, it was welcome. Hmm. All Mongolians, they were with open arms, right. welcoming, you know, foreigners, right. uh, because uh, they didn't went only to preach, hmm. not only to proselytize, you know, they went there to help. Right. And they were running a lot of, uh, you know, community uh, services and, you know, health projects, education. So Mongolians were blessed hmm. by, 
you know, the Christians from mm -hmm. different countries of the right. world and different religions as well. Uh, nowadays, we can see a shift a little bit on this uh, trend. Mongolia is becoming one of the mining capitals of the world. Right. If you read The Economist magazine, Newsweek, Time, mm -hmm. or Forbes, you basically every month we read an article about the booming of mining in right. Mongolia. So people are now see, they see opportunities, mm -hmm. you know, to have better life, sure. to have better jobs, and, and somehow the, the mind was shifted a little bit from religion to, you know, work, to sure. jobs, and to give something good for the family. Sure. And we need now probably, I see it from our perspective, find new ways, you know, to interact with them and to present Christianity, you know, to them. So if you had a message that you'd like to give to the church writ large, particularly in this area of the world, what would it be? James, first, I want to acknowledge the help we have received from Australian people. Really? Yes. From basically the last seven years, we have been blessed by many teams, I would say probably about 30 teams coming to uh, Mongolia. Some of these teams for a long-term commitment, hmm. some for a short-term commitment, but we just want to acknowledge you know, sure. the help we have received from them. And I would say if anyone who is uh, watching us you know, right now have a passion in the heart to reach out, mm -hmm. you know, to do something, it does not need you know, be related to, you know, studying Bible. It can be, you know, digging wells for the community. It can be teaching English for the kids, running. We have a group going there for a children camp. Hmm. We have teams going there and uh, helping the community, for example, building gears for poor people. Right, and that, that's the kind of ha a house that they live exactly. in. Exactly, right? that's right. the tent, round tent right. where Mongolians live. Uh, health. Uh, activities. We run health, diabetes training, and many other activities are run by these uh, Australian groups. And recently, the Seventh day Adventist Church renewed their commitment to keep helping us in Mongolia. So, this is the Adventist Church in Australia. Exactly. Has, has this sort of partnership arrangement. Exactly. Okay, right. From the last uh, seven years, the mm -hmm. Seventh day Adventist in Australia right. is heavily committed to help Mongolia. And our plan now, James, is to build community centers. Okay. So, we have this development plan, mm -hmm. and uh, from the viewers, who are willing to come, you know, they can join any group who is going to Mongolia and they can be from any uh, different uh, background, different religions. They are most welcome to come and help, right. you know, and they can join the groups for two weeks time and go there and help Mongolia. Uh, where do they go to find out information about this? You know, in each of our uh, regional uh, uh, centers in Australia, we have a coordinators okay. who run this project, you know, in Perth, in Northern Territory, in uh, South uh, Australia, in right. Sydney, in Melbourne. We have people who right. are coordinating the so project. So just contact the Adventist Church, yeah, exactly. the, the, the administrative offices, it's available yeah. on the web. Okay, that sounds great. Uh, thanks so much for your work you're doing and for the challenge for us to get involved as a community, Christian community here in the South Pacific. Stay with us. We'll be right back after this short break. Thank you.